I've referenced in this character into an empty scene. This is Stuart from the Animation Mentors website. Stuart is a really solid rig and uh, check them out if you want to see what other rigs they have. Uh, I've also included a couple of spheres in the scene. These are the juggling balls and I've parented these to a control curve, a NURB circle, uh, and that's what I'm going to be using to attach uh, and control the movement of the balls. Uh, I prefer to do it with a control curve rather than directly on the balls themselves. Uh, I've also put the balls on a layer so we can hide them when they're not needed. And uh, the character, I've posed the character ready to start animating. I've dropped the hips a little bit. I've moved the feet a little bit apart, apart and rotated the feet a little. And as you can see, I've got the hands in that place ready to start animating. I'm going to need the balls in view because uh, I'm going to use those to place the uh, locators that are going to be used to control the hands. And I'm going to control the, uh, set up the hand movement first, attach the ball, and then I will set up the aim targets, which are another set of locators that will allow us to throw and release the balls. Uh, and this will be done all by turning on and off constraints on different locators. So with that in mind, I'm going to uh, create a locator. Uh, so this comes in at zero roll space. I'm going to give it a scale it up a bit. Let's see, now I could kind of work to position this. I want this to be in the center of where this ball is positioned so it's going to catch it. But the way I'm going to do it, I think, is I'm just going to grab the ball, grab the locator, do a constraint, point constraint, maintain offset is off, and that'll drop the locator directly onto the center pivot of the ball. Uh, it's given me a constraint node. Uh, if I delete that constraint node, by doing constrain the target, that will then leave the ball position, uh, the locator position at the center of the ball. I could have snap positioned it using the snap tools, but uh, this way will work for me for now. So I'm going to get into the habit of naming everything. This is left hand control locator. Um, and with that in place, I'm going to freeze the transforms on it. Uh, when you freeze transforms on locators, if you have the scale turned on, it will shrink it back down to its original size when it was created. So I'm going to turn that off, hit apply, and that freezes out everything except the scales. So what I'm going to do is create uh, another two locators. Uh, this locator is going to control the hand and the position of the ball. Uh, and the other two locators will help to move the hand back and forth. So I'm going to just duplicate this, control D, and uh, I'll give this a value of minus 10 for now. We can adjust this further down the line if we want. This is going to be left hand outer locator. And I'm going to duplicate that, change the value to plus 10. This is going to be the left hand inner locator. So you'll see how this works. It'll make a bit more sense when I start doing it. First of all, we want this locator to control the hand. This is the IK for the hand. So I'm going to grab the locator first. That's the leader. IK second. And the constraint tool. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, 
that the properties for the attributes for the point constrain and maintain offset. I want to check on. That's going to maintain the distance between these uh, this locator and the IK. If I don't have this turned on, this IK will snap into position, which I don't want. So let's hit apply. What that gives me is a, a constraint node on the IK, and that is now part of the rig, but it hasn't affected the hierarchy of the rig at all. But what it's going to let us do is grab this IK, uh, this locator, and move the hand around. So outer locator, I'm going to use this to influence the position of the hand by pulling it out. Uh, and to do that, uh, I'm going to select the locator first, the outer locator, left hand, uh, right hand control. Oops, these are all rights. Let's get that sorted. Um, and grab this right hand outer locator, grab the inner one, take off maintain offset so that it snaps and hit apply. That's pulled that hand and locator over to the other side. Uh, it's also with uh, the low, um, the constraint node, you get this W, which is for weight node attached to the uh, hand control as well. So now I'm going to use the inner locator to pull this in. Uh, so it's leader first, follower second, and then hit fly. Now what this has done is it's left the hand in the middle between these two uh, uh, locators. Uh, because these two weight nodes have an equal uh, value, it leaves the constraints locator halfway between the two. This is where uh, this is going to be super useful. If we move one of them further, the hand remains equal distance from the two. Uh, if we drop the value of one of them, it will affect the position as well uh, relative to how much uh, we change the values. So what we've got now is a hand that's constrained to both of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to frame one. Uh, outer hand is going to have a value of one. See that. Inner hand is going to have a value of zero. Let's do that. And I'm going to turn on the auto keyframe for now. Now I'm going to do this over 16 frames. So 17 is going to be the starting point of the next loop. So let's key these again. Uh, at frame nine, this is halfway starting on the second part of the loop. I'm going to reverse these. That's going to have a value of zero. That one's going to have a value of one. Uh, what that will give us, if we have a look in the graph, uh, is a curve that looks a bit like that. Uh, and if we move it through the timeline, we've got this movement back and forth. So let's uh, cycle this animation. This now will keep going uh, as long as the timeline. Uh, it'll keep going now as far as the timeline allows. So to bring the ball down, I'm going to go to a quarter of the way, that's frame five. Uh, and, and that's why I chose 16 frame loop because it's got Halfway point is eight, and the uh, quarter point is four, so it lets me work, you know, uh, distribute these keys fairly evenly. Uh, I'm going to drop this down by eyeballing it. 
Uh, let's round this off for convenience. Uh, and I'm going to put a keyframe on this translate Y. That's going to change the what we see in the outliner. It's changed from blue to green. Uh, and it's also given a blend point node. This used to be called blend parent. It's now blend point. And this is what affects whether the uh, the keyframe or the constraint are influencing the position of the object. We've got a single key there. So let's go to frame one. We can zero this. And at frame 13, this will come up somewhere. Let's call it 12. I'm working with one numbers at the moment just to make things easier. Uh, and at frame 17, that will also be zero. So let's have a look at what we've got. OK, I need to cycle this curve. Pre and post infinity. And looking at this, again, I want to tidy up these. Um, these uh, tangents so that it moves in and out of its position smoothly. Uh, it would probably help as well at frame nine for now to zero this. That's going to give me should give me uh, an equal uh, value at the halfway point uh, compared to the start. And then there we go. And it, you can fine tune these. Um, further along down the line as well. There we go. So what's that given us? That's given us a looping hand movement uh, with very little kind of going on. Uh, again, the good thing about this is we can grab these keyframes, put an expression or additional uh, keys onto these, uh, and that will give us more of, uh, randomness to the movements. So I'm going to do the same over on this other hand, uh, and I'll pick up after I've done that in the next video.